Hey guys, it's Sav. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make homemade croissants from scratch. Homemade croissants have always sounded really scary to me. It's really, the steps in itself are very, very easy. It's really the resting period that the dough has to go into the fridge or the freezer that makes it seem like it's really hard or it seems it's a very long time. So my recipe is gonna take two days to make. I've seen croissant recipes go for, that take three days, but I'm gonna cut it down to only two. The outside of the croissant will be nice and crispy and flaky and the inside is gonna be soft buttery and tender and it is just going to melt in your mouth once you have a homemade croissant you will never go back to a store-bought one i promise you and so keep watching and i'll show you guys how to get this all going on a lightly floured surface you want to pound your cold butter until it's relatively square it doesn't have to be perfect yet once your butter has flattened out quite a bit, you want to place your butter onto your parchment square that you made earlier. And then just fold the sides up over the butter and then flip it around to the other side and just begin to take your rolling pin. And starting from the center, just begin to roll out onto all four corners, onto the outer edges until you have a nice, even 8 by 8 inch square of butter. When you're done with this part, you want to place your butter back into your fridge while you work on your dough. On a lightly floured surface, I'm taking out my dough from the fridge. It's been sitting in there for about 30 minutes and just take your rolling pin and lightly flatten it out. You want to roll your dough into an 8 by 16 inch rectangle. And the key here is just to use your hands to make sure everything's nice and even. Make sure you have a handy ruler out to make sure that it's exactly 8 by 16. And then just transfer your dough onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Take another piece of parchment paper and place on top and then place this into the freezer for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to show you guys my neat little trick here to keep my counter cold. I have two freezer gallon bags filled with ice and I place it on my counter for about 15 minutes and then I remove it and make sure I wipe off any excess moisture. If there's any wetness, you want to make sure it's completely dry. And then I just remove my dough from my freezer and place it directly on top. And make sure you just remove any excess flour with a brush while you're working or as you go along. Then you just take your slab of butter and place it right in the middle of your dough. And here I'm just checking to make sure that my butter and my dough are exactly the same temperature or the consistency. Or else you're going to have one thing working against the other and it's just going to be a complete mess. So here I'm just measuring here 16 inches down to make sure that it's all nice and even. I brought the bottom half up towards the middle and now I'm taking the top half down to meet in the center. Mine's not quite center, but that's okay. We're just sealing the butter at this point. So then just use your hands to seal the dough and kind of press it gently. I lightly floured the surface again and the dough and I'm just giving my dough a few good whacks here to kind of spread out the butter just a little bit. And then I want to rotate this 90 degrees and now I'm giving it another few good whacks on the counter. And now I'm going to take my ruler and measure, make sure it's 8 inches across. And now I'm just going to take my rolling pin starting from the middle and with long single strokes to try to work it all the way out to the ends there. And then do a complete 180 and then I'm going to start from the middle again and work my way out once again. And the reason why you should keep turning it is because people tend to put more pressure when they're uh, rolling away from themselves. So it's best to keep that practice going on in your head while you're rolling. Next, you want to roll this out into an 8 by 20 inch rectangle. Again, using my hands, I'm going to make sure everything's nice and even. When you're making croissants, it's very crucial everything's nice and even and you need to have a ruler handy. So here I'm checking to make sure it is 20 inches going down. And before I roll this up, I'm going to wipe off any excess flour front and back of the dough. Next, you want to fold the bottom half of the dough about two-thirds of the way up, making sure you're wiping off any excess flour. And then you want to fold the top part as well, making sure, see, I'm always trimming as I'm going along to make sure everything's nice and even and straight. So it's nice and even, so now I'm just folding that top part over as well. And then just use your hands to seal and then bring that top half over to fold right down the middle. Wipe off any excess flour. 
and now I've just completed my first double book fold. In total, I'm going to use three turns using a combination of double book folds and single book folds to make this laminated dough. So here, think of this like a book. The left side, it would be like the spine of the book should always be to your left while you are folding out or rolling out your dough, okay? Now place your tightly wrapped dough into the refrigerator for one hour. On a lightly floured surface, I took my dough out of the refrigerator and I'm just giving it a few good whacks. See the spine of the book is, is towards me and then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and this is the way you see the spine is on my left and the open ends are to my right. And I'm giving another few good whacks just to kind of stretch it out. And then again, just make sure you start from the middle, long single strokes, roll it out thin and then I'm going to turn it completely around, do a 180. And because like I said before, you always put more pressure as you go away. That's why it's good to always lift your dough from the counter. This is just to make sure that your dough doesn't stick to your counter. So I'm actually doing that a lot even though I don't show you. So I flip my dough completely around to the other side and the same process, start from the middle, work your way out. And if you need to, roll it out across to go about eight inches across. So I'm going to take my tape measure to make sure it reads 20 inches and it's good. Now I'm going to fold this letter style. I took the bottom third, I folded it up and then make sure that I take the top third and fold that part over and this completes my second turn. This is called a single book fold and now we are going to wrap this up nice and tight and again make sure you dust off any excess flour before you fold everything over and this is going to go back into the refrigerator, refrigerator for about an hour as well. So now it's the following morning. I've removed my chilled dough. I placed it on my chilled counter and I'm splitting this in half and then I'm putting the other half of this dough back into the freezer. I forgot to mention that before I'm rolling this out to shape into croissants, I put it into the freezer for about 15 minutes before I'm doing this part here. So you're going to just again roll it into a rectangle about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch thick. Again, the key here is just making sure everything is nice and even and just trimming as you go along. And I'm just going to start by uh, making a diagonal cut with a very sharp knife. And then starting from the bottom here, the base is going to be four inches across. And then just, there goes my first triangle. And then I just rotate my ruler. Now I'm starting back up at the top, measuring out four inches. And then there goes my second croissant. And then rotating again back down to the bottom, measuring four inches across. And that'll give me my third one. Now the height of my croissants are about six inches. And then I'm going to stretch them out with my hands to about eight or nine. This part's pretty self-explanatory. You want to start by making your slit at the base. And then hold the bottom of the croissant and then stretch out the tip slightly. Now you can make these larger if you want, but the larger you make them, the longer they need to proof. So that's totally up to you. Once you stretch that far enough, you want to start rolling from the bottom all the way up until you get to the very tip. Make sure that you have brushed off any excess flour too, and you're done. So here are our chocolate croissants. I'm measuring out about two inches across for each croissant, and then I'm going to place two chocolate squares in each croissant, and you just want to roll up one end. Make sure you leave enough space between the two, and then continue to roll over the second piece of chocolate and you're all done. So I'm gonna cover my croissants here and I'm gonna let them proof. Oh, let me show you a picture of my chocolate croissants as well. Um, they're gonna proof for about three hours and then you're gonna bake them off and they are going to look like this. They're just beautiful, golden, pretty. I did do a little egg wash with some, a little pinch of salt and a little bit of milk before I baked them off and then they became nice and crispy and golden. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.